originally I had a single frame design, the, the space frame, the Jones space frame. And this is the space frame because it's a space frame. And, and the idea behind this is to have uh, maximum standover height. So the standover height's a lot lower. Normally your crossbar would you know, traditionally have been up here or at least here. This is a very low standover height. So a lot of room for technical riding and bending your knees and getting on and off the bike. Most people were looking for a tight wheelbase. I was sticking with this short wheelbase concept because it makes sense. Easier to wheelie, easier to get on the front wheel, easier to bunny hop, less material, lighter weight, tighter turning radius. But also, I want a bike that is, of course, laterally stiff and, yes, vertically cushy, vertically compliant, so it's uh, absorbing bumps. A conventional diamond frame with the tall triangles is very stiff vertically and not as stiff side to side. I've changed it around so that the, the frame is, has less of a triangle in the back. These tubes are ovalized here and here so that this rear end can flex up and down a little bit. The seat tube here is not braced by the seat tube, so this tube can flex rearward because it's not braced, but it also can flex rearward because this tube is curved. And a curved tube, like a spring, will kind of straighten out and allow this tube to move. So we get a little, we get a little flex back here, up and down there. Get a little flex here, so that moves back. So the seat's moving back and the rear end's moving up. And then the side-to-side -side stiffness is from having a short seat tube. The seat tube is very short from here to here, effectively. This part of the seat tube isn't handling the side-to-side -side stiffness when you're standing. And when you're climbing a hill and pulling on the bars or controlling the bike, it's a twist between your hands and your feet. Your feet are twisting one way and your hands are going the other way, uh, or pulling, usually, uh, to control the bike. So we want it to be stiff from here down to here. So really large down tube, really short, large seat tube, and then the top tube, the top tubes form a large uh, triangle going to the rear. So a lot of stiffness side to side and uh, four tubes at the head tube, down tube, single top tube, and another set of top tubes. So a very strong connection up here. Okay, so this piece of tape will represent the seat stay that would have been here if this were designed more normally. And this will show that when I, when I push down on the seat, you'll see that flex. I just push a little bit, you can see it moving. If I push really hard, it drops a lot. So this is indeed the distance from the rear axle to the seat post clamp is shortening. And of course, yes, you have a seat post that's extended a lot. This also gives you more flex. I purposefully designed the bikes with a smaller diameter seat post so you get a little more flex out of the ride when you're seated. And so vertical flex in the frame, large wheel for a smooth ride, flex in the seat, to, seat post, and then a frame that is stiff side to side and you have a lot of standover height. And then, then at the other end of the bike, you have a fork that doesn't flex front to back, very stiff in this direction, so we're not getting the, the rearward flex. Uh, and then the wheel, the wheel itself, has very wide spacing. It's very wide spacing uh, front end so that the actual side to side stiffness of the wheel is very, very good. It's a very strong wheel side to side. You have a lot of tire clearance in the fork. You have enough room to run a fat front wheel in the fork. The 26 inch by 3.8 wheel turns out to be about the same height as a 29 inch wheel. So we can change from this to a different size. All the Jones 29 inch bikes can have a fat front wheel or a 29 inch wheel. And I found that having the fat front wheel on the 29ers is, is really nice. It's, it, it, it absorbs the bumps better. It allows you to run over big rocks and ride across ruts without getting stuck in the ruts. It's really a great ride, but then you can just take this wheel out, put in a 29 inch wheel and go riding with the matching size wheels. Or you could put on some uh, road tires on the 29er wheels and then use that for uh, road touring. So this bike could be set up for mountain biking, road touring, whatever you like just by switching out the wheels um, and still having the same great performance in all the situations.